Ja, hallo, freut mich, dass es so voll ist. Um, I, I've seen some guys uh, whom I've just have heard speaking French and English. So, shall I switch to English for the talk? Okay, so uh, I take that as a yes. So, the slides are in German, sorry, uh, but um, I think it uh, works anyway. What I want to talk about uh, today is basically, um, I don't want to show you uh, SSH basics. I want, you to show, want to show you what you what else you can do with it. The surroundings, the nice tools, the nice hacks, um, what's all in there, uh, but people don't know. So, um, okay, yet another s uh, chair. And, um, Everything I show you should work with a uh, uh, OpenSSH 4.3. Uh, I've tested it like 10 years ago with 5.1. And uh, up above 10 years ago, um, we are um, establishing a tradition today because this is the third time I'm giving this talk at COSIN, um, always with five years in between. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, the first one was in 2009. Um, so the current version of uh, OpenSSH is uh, 8.0, released in April, someone. Um, Debian 10 Buster will ship with 7.9 because uh, when 8.0 was released, was already uh, Buster was already uh, frozen. So um, I've changed the order of the talk compared to the last two times. Uh, because I want to show more the tools around, because that's where we got uh, new things. Uh, and I will sh show then, as much time allows, um, some uh, onboard stuff, uh, which is available in OpenSSH um, vanilla. So, um, first, uh, what's new in uh, recent OpenSSH versions? Uh, 8.0 is a feature release and also security bug re uh, release. Uh, it also uh, was said to have a lot of internal refactoring. Um, yeah, one security fix, and they dropped uh, one old uh, syntax in use only in a few points uh, in the SSH daemon, where you could say IP address slash port number. And uh, this was meant to help um, IPv6 users, because the colon is already in use there. But uh, in the meanwhile, the established um, syntax is with square brackets and works well. And uh, the slash syntax has been confused with CIDR network masks too, so they kicked it out. Um, then uh, we have uh, the first release with a, a post-quantum cryptography key exchange included. Um, I have no idea what exactly they mean with a combination on uh, between two algorithms or something. So, um, yeah, and uh, they raised the default uh, RSA um, key length to 3K. And uh, they introduced uh, the dash J option for proxy jump, we'll coming later to that, uh, also with the SCP and SFTP uh, command line tools before it was only available in SSH. Um, then uh, in version, uh, other recent versions, there were a few things uh, which are nice additions too. So on the one hand, uh, you can now uh, specify port numbers by service names. So you ca can say uh, port number, for example, if you connect to an HTTPS port, why that might be possible, uh, we'll come later to that. Uh, you can say, uh, dash p for port and then https instead of 443 so that's new since 7.9 um, then uh, the format in which private keys are written has changed in 7.8 um, so the default format it's backward compa compatible to versions uh, since 2014 but um, since you usually using that ssh daemon uh, where you're using the uh, where you're using the um, where you generating the key on um, should be an, shouldn't be an issue. And then uh, since 7.7 .7 and hence included in uh, Debian Buster, 
uh, you have uh, the first uh, post quantum cryptography, cryptography uh, algorithms uh, for encryption in SSH. And uh, then in 7.7, uh, they also kicked out uh, uh, support for connecting to ancient uh, SSH uh, implementations, which are, uh, were published before the SSH RFCs came out, so like um, 18 years ago. So shouldn't harm most of us either, unless we have like some uh, hardware firmware which SSH you, uh, of which offers SSH like uh, some old SunSpark uh, firmware. In that case, my recommendation use PuTTY, also available on Linux. Yeah, um, you might know a Screen and Tmux. It's very helpful uh, together with SSH, um, especially uh, because you can uh, um, run applications or clients long time and always connect from some other machine via SSH and then we connect to the session. Um, yeah, uh, Screen is the older one. It's actually older than Linux because it uh, started in the BSD world. Um, and Tmux is the newer one um, trying to clean up some things. It's more colorful. And it, at some points uh, has more features, and at some other points it has less features, like no serial console support. So, um, then a little bit closer to SSH is uh, Auto SSH. Um, Auto SSH uh, works nice with screen together, but the nice feature is um, it opens two tunnels ad ad in addition to the shell session. One tunnel in the one direction, connects on the other end to the to its own tunnel in the other direction and uh, regularly uh, sends data through and see if that comes through. If not, it kills the SSH and restarts it with the same command line options. And if you uh, use uh, dash capital RD, which means uh, give me a screen session, either connect to one or um, start a new one, and if there's a non-detached one, detach the, that one. So you always get a screen session with that com command, and you get reconnected usually to the same one uh, if the connection was interrupted uh, and or has been killed by auto SSH. Um, so that's really nice. That's uh, basically the way I read my mails. Mosh. Uh, in the meanwhile, many of you might have heard of it. It uh, started as, uh, I think, PhD project or something at M MIT. It's an uh, alternative uh, for interactive uh, shells over high, um, high latency uh, connections. So if you have a bad mobile connection over uh, GSM, Edge, something, or even satellite, if possible, um, you might recognize that SSH is horrible to use if you're typing longer texts or commands because you don't see what you type unless uh, the bits have passed once through and back. With Mosh, uh, both sides, client and server, um, maintain a state of the screen and you immediately see what you type uh, in Mosh. With some intelligence, it knows that it doesn't have to show um, control characters. It knows that um, if uh, th th that backspace erases characters and goes one back, and it tries to guess what the application on the other side might do. It probably wo it doesn't work that well with VI, um, but it works well with shell, more or less. And um, it's nice if you type texts uh, like emails or so, because um, you notice if you have made a typo and you can even fix it, at least with backspace if it's not too far away, uh, and you s even if the data hasn't been uh, uh, received on the other side. Actually, there was even a um, request, or more, way, more or less a support request, on a Mosh mailing list like a year ago. Um, if, they, uh, if it would be able to raise the time to live, uh, thingy and and um, because they want to do shell connections to the moon. So um, 
Yeah, and basically you just had to change like a few lines of code and it should be able to work even in a setup where you have a lag of minutes. But yeah. Um, for example, try it. <laughs> you have the license, I know. <laughs> no, and um, it uses UDP, but the initial uh, authentication and authorization is done over SSH. So uh, the first thing it does, it make, uh, makes an SSH connection and starts its own server program on the remote side, which needs to be installed already. And then uh, that one says, okay, I'm listening on UDP port uh, and that IP. And then uh, the real MOSH connection starts, if the connection over UDP works. So you have all authentication and authorization uh, possibilities of SSH, but none of the forwarding uh, features yet. That's a long time feature request and I assume they will get something in there, although it's primarily meant for um, interactive usage. So I, I usually use it if I'm on the, on the train and in tunnels uh, to read my mail instead of auto SSH. Yeah, and it's, it's thought to be Modern only, it only supports UTF-8, uh, no legacy encodings. Um, SSHFS, uh, that's basically a, a possibility to mount uh, files from a SSH server uh, with Fuse, so it works on Mac, it works on Linux, no idea about Windows, maybe with Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and um, yeah, so you, it's often more comfortable for me than to do some SMB mount magic I don't understand on Linux. Um, so, yeah, works as long as the SSH connection is there. So, usually needs a reliable connection. Um, yeah. SSLH is a nice uh, demultiplexer which allows you to run uh, a web server and an SSH team on the same port, especially an HTTP, uh, HTTPS server. Um, the general idea is that um, because uh, the protocols look quite different, um, they decide on the first few bytes uh, um, what kind of connection it is and forward it to the either the web server running then on a different port or the SSH server. So. Um, you can have a completely normal looking uh, HTTPS server, but you can SSH to it and uh, you will get a connection too. That's very nice if you are in some uh, in some some uh, Wi-Fi which has castrated all, uh, um, all the ports and only allows port 80 and 443. So you still get home uh, via SSH. I had to use that quite a uh, uh, um, few times. Um, and that's, that's the one point where I can say now dash P HTTPS instead of 443. Um, yeah. There are two implementations of it. Uh, one is in Perl and one is in C. And Debian ships the, the C written one, which is the newer one. And seems to be more performant. Then something uh, I uh, recently found uh, shipped in Buster, so it's it's only available from Debian 10 and maybe recent Ubuntu releases. Um, but of course you can always compile stuff yourself. Um, SSH tools is a set of uh, tools which um, either um, queries SSH or does nice things over SSH. SSH diff uh, just makes a normal diff between a local and a remote file. SSH facts uh, does a remote login and runs things like uh, LSB release and, and uh, checks a few other things and returns in a machine readable way what kind of operating system is running there, which release, which SSH version, whatever. Um, SSH host keys is also a nice thing, um, which um, usually if you connect by uh, SSH, it shows you one host key and in with only one fingerprint. Um, this tool shows you all host keys with two fingerprints, 
one with the old MD5, which is used by old SSH uh, versions and the new uh, SHA-256. Uh, um, so you can easily see all the host keys without uh, having to fiddle with SSH options and connect like six times or so. SSH ping really does something like ping just on port 22. Um, so it really um, sends a ping every second and shows you latency, the, the, uh, not the latency, round trip time, etc. Well, an SSH version just shows the remote SSH banner, which you can also do with netcat, but then you need to do li something like echo, single quote, single quote, pipe netcat. Um, this one is, is just uh, more comfortable. So, yeah. Another recent tool I found is SSH audit, which shows you uh, metadata about the cryptographic part of an SSH server. Um, it gives colored output, and uh, the color is usually um, helpful to see which algorithms shouldn't be used anymore because they are known to be weak or even un insecure. Um, the example you see here is from a standard Debian uh, stretch. So I can't remember that I have changed uh, anything with, the, with regards to algorithms there. But yeah, um, the list is much more longer. I just had to find a, a way between too small and uh, everything on the screen. So would be unreadable. Probably is unreadable back there. But you see the colors at least and can try it your own. It's readable, okay. Um, then alternative SSH servers. There's not only open SSH. Of course, there are commercial servers. Uh, Tektia or so, what SSH.com uh, is called nowadays. But there are several free servers. Dropbear is probably the most known one. It's very well uh, known in the embedded scene. So you have that one usually on, on OpenWRT or um, some Apple products. Uh, and also has some some of the OpenSSH features, but not all. So, for example, it doesn't uh, uh, have SFTP support by default. Then there is uh, LSH, which is uh, the project to re-implement or to implement SSH v2 uh, protocol stack server as well as client under GPL because OpenSSH is under BSD license. Some people are not happy with it. So the main feature is the license. And then there's uh, tiny SSH, uh, which is a minimalistic SSH server, uh, only SSH v2, only a subset of the features. And the nice thing is only modern crypto cryptography and only key-based login. No password login possible. So that's really nice, and it even uh, supports already some of the post-quantum algorithms. So, um, yeah, and it doesn't uh, require open SSL either. So, um, uh, you, there is an option to compile it with a, a NACL library, but uh, it ships also uh, its own library similar to, N uh, well, they, they say compatible with NACL. I'm not sure what that exactly means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, SSH is not only for Unix. Um, there are quite some uh, clients for Windows. Well, um, Zygwin also ships uh, Open SSH server. In the meanwhile, we have a Windows subsystem for Linux where you also can get uh, SSH, of course. Um, but there are some native um, Windows clients. Um, Putty is probably uh, well known, but Putty is not only for Windows. You can also get it in Debian, up, get, install, Putty. Um, and WinSCP is probably the well, uh, most well-known um, file copy client uh, with uh, SSH in the back. Actually, it uses Putty code, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, then again, Dropbear, uh, because it also contains a client implementation. Um, yeah, can even have that on... on iPhone or Apple TV, it's built in in Dreamox, it's in, in the Tourist Omnia, in OpenWRT, uh, many uh, network storage devices have it. Then there's even an SSH client uh, for the Sony PlayStation Portable, uh, for those who still remember that. 
uh, also uses uh, drop bear code. And uh, yeah, even uh, Java implementation of SSH for uh, Java mobile edition uh, capable mobile phones. And there is a putty implementation for Symbian. I guess that's probably no more, no one using anymore nowadays, but um, yeah. And for Android, you have ConnectBot, for example. There are several forks of it. Um, I have no idea which one is uh, the one you should use nowadays. ConnectBot.org, this website still exists, so I guess, yeah. So um, that's mostly for the tools around. Um, so let's have a look at uh, what comes uh, already with uh, on board. On the one hand, what I always consider important, but which hasn't been, um, well, how should I say? Um, many, many people just don't care if SSH asks about the fingerprint. They just say yes and fine. So like trust on first use. But it's actually not that difficult to get the fingerprint. So um, if uh, SSH asks for uh, some host key, um, it usually tells us the algorithm of the host key. So we look in etc SSH uh, directory and then SSH underscore host underscore algorithm underscore key uh, dot pub or not is, is not important. And as, but uh, unless you're doing that as user, because only user uh, user can only access the .pub file. And with SSH keygen dash L for list fingerprints and dash F for file, you can always check uh, those fingerprints. And uh, if they fit, um, you know you're connected to the right server. You can, for example, use out of band uh, management like like uh, some BMC or, or IMM, KVM, whatever. Uh, for example, after installation, um, or you can um, log in from another machine, uh, which also already knows the host key, or you can get the host keys from the sysadmin. For example, Debian um, has all its host keys in a file over HTTPS, and, and as long as you trust the HTTPS certificate, uh, which is more than trusting nobody, uh, well, no, uh, having no trust in, in the key at all. Um, and you can store that as SS in the .ssh directory as known hosts 2. Historically, known hosts and known hosts 2 were for, I think, two different uh, generations of SSH. And uh, luckily, both are still read uh, by current OpenSSH var uh, versions. So you can have two files. And um, one you can use, for example, for automatic stuff, and the other one for manually uh, used stuff. But um, there's also a project called OpenSSH Known Hosts, not by OpenSSH, but well, yeah. And um, mm, can I get the? You do, you do, uh, well, actually, what 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 is below here is just URL equals, and then the URL from the above. Um, this is a file config file for OpenSSH known host, which tells uh, op uh, the tool which plugin to use. Well, curl, just download it. Uh, which exist codes to ignore and uh, what it should fetch. And then it fetches um, from all the configured uh, sources all the known host files and um, generate one single ho known host file, which is read in addition to your own known host file. Um, this is nice if you have several organizations you work with and uh, they all provide such a uh, downloadable uh, list of uh, known hosts. Nice thing is also because uh, you usually the host names are hashed in there. You can publish this file without um, showing to the world all your host names. So, um, yeah, another possibility is if you have DNSSEC. Um, that means signed DNS entries. You can also publish uh, your SSH fingerprints uh, on DNS, and you can tell uh, SSH to uh, use them. So um, this is a command to generate them. It actually generates entries, which you can just copy and paste into a bind zone file. And this is how you uh, query them manually. 
So you need to type SSH FP for fingerprint and then the host name. Um, and you, here you see how they look like. Uh, this column is the type of uh, key. So like, is it RSA, ECDSA? And well, yeah, here again, the line is a little bit cut at the moment. Um, it's just the same as uh, above with an actual host name behind. So um, using keys, actually, you don't want to enter the, your password every time you log in via SSH. You're using SSH if you do a git push. Uh, you're using SSH if you do backups with rsync. You want to uh, do that without having to type in your password every time. So one nice thing are SSH uh, keys. Uh, it's asynchron, um, asynchron uh, whoop, uh, public, uh, yeah, um, asymmetric uh, encryption. It's with uh, also called public key cryptography. You have a private key, you have a public key. Usually you put the public key on the remote machine into a file uh, in a .ssh directory called authorized underscore keys. It's usually um, the length and uh, type of the key. Um, yeah, then the, the key and at the end uh, some comment, for example, from which host this key is and user. And um, then you can use the private key to log in onto that machine uh, if the uh, private and the public key matches. So um, usually, if you create such a key pair, you should use a passphrase uh, to uh, save, uh, well, to um, pop, to secure the uh, private key. You usually have to enter this uh, passphrase once per login session. Depends if, if you're under X or Wayland, you're um, entering it probably when you log in. Um, well, after you, you have logged in directly. If you're on a shell, well, unless uh, until you log out or so. Um, there's also a nice tool. Um, if you can log in by password, you can use SSH copy ID, which does copy your public keys uh, from your local machine onto the remote machine into the proper file. Uh, and you need a different uh, authentication mechanism. So for example, password ne needs to be enabled for that. Or a key fetched from a remote location. Um, yeah. Uh, to have that in memory uh, um, during the session, you need a SSH agent running. That's on the most Linux distributions that's done by default uh, if installed and you're logging into a um, graphical uh, session. Um, there are not some com commands to list the fingerprints uh, currently um, saved in SSH and agent in the memory. So they are unencrypted in the memory but encrypted on disk. And uh, you can even fetch uh, a key from the disk on a different machine if you um, SSH into it, uh, you say, you well, you want the terminal uh, and still run a different application than the shell and you want to forward the agent. So that way I can um, use my work key for my workstation without having it, uh, for, for example, for my laptop, without having it stored on the laptop. It's then only in the memory of the laptop. And as soon as I close that session, it's gone again. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So um, the, the the comment was that uh, the SSH agent forwarding work, works in both ways. So I can fetch a remote key as well as I can use my local key on a remote machine. So for the for example for multiple hops. Um, yeah, uh, there are also alternative SSH agent uh, agents. You can, for example, store your SSH keys. In uh, the GNU PG agent, you can use the GNOME key ring. Um, and uh, for KDE, there's the K wallet. And there you need some, some glue tools, uh, uh, K wallet command line uh, interface, which is a third party tool, uh, and GPG agent in addition, as it seems. Um, 
So, and you can even uh, lock your SSH agent temporarily. If you, uh, for example, uh, want to give a, a colleague uh, a shell to fix something, but uh, need to go to the toilet, he can't use your SSH keys, but they are all in the memory still. And you, uh, until you unlock them later with the same password phrase you entered initially to lock them. Um, yeah, and um, general co uh, options dash uh, capital A is forward the agent, so that I have them, uh, the agent available on the remote side. Uh, or dash cap uh, lowercase a, don't forward the agent if you have it enabled it by default for that host, for example. And uh, this is uh, the SSH underscore config uh, snippet if you want to enable the agent forwarding for two domains, for example. Um, yeah. So, yeah, well, file transfer uh, with onboard uh, tools. Uh, SSH uh, client usually comes with SCP for secure copy, which has the user interface of uh, RCP, which was an unencrypted remote copy uh, from old Unix times where encryption was unimportant and authentication was like host based and maybe identity based. Uh, so it has not consistent uh, user interface with uh, SSH. Like the dash p for port is there dash capital p because dash p is already uh, was in use from R R uh, RSA RSH pardon um, and then there's also SFTP which has an FTP command line client like interface so it it's starts its local kind of shell and you say copy that file from here to there um, like uh, ls is uh, the remote uh, ls and lls for local ls is the local directory um, so it just mimics the old ftp command uh, line interface uh, but uses ssh as a transport layer and uh, what is important to say here SFTP support needs to be uh, needs to exist on the remote server because it's it's uh, its own subsystem. It's not in the core of SSH. And for example, Drop Bear doesn't have that subsystem. But you can use the Open SSH SFTP subsystem with Drop Bear if you want. That's the reason why they uh, split it out uh, the SFTP subsystem into its own package in Debian a while ago. Yeah, that's uh, the uh, config file. Uh, the main page is ssh underscore config, but the config file is just um, .ssh slash config. Uh, a few nice entries. Um, hash known hosts means uh, if, if I say yes, uh, the host names are not there in plain text, but uh, as a hash. So you can't figure out to which hosts I connect. Malware actually does that. So it tries to uh, see where can I connect from here and looks into that known hosts file and if it's not hashed, it might try uh, to use maybe some not uh, password secured uh, SSH keys to log in there. Um, and this no host authentication for local host, if you have a home shared uh, with several machines, like for home on N NFS for example, Localhost always has a different host key, depending on which workstation you're sitting. And this setting says, ignore the host key if it's localhost. Not the ho uh, I think it, it looks really at the IP address, not only at the host name. Um, then you can make short aliases if you have a long, long host name. You can say, okay, if I want to connect to sim, actually connect to simlink to no1.org, um, to agent forwarding and to x forwarding. Or you can even specify a combination of user and um, host name. So if I just say SSH SF, uh, I get a connection to uh, shell sourceforge.net with a username extern. And this is a, a hack which is also possible but probably not recommended for uh, uh, general purpose. If you have a mobile, well, no, if you have a detachable network card. And um, host name, uh, uh, IP addresses are given uh, MAC address based. So the MAC address is always the same because it's inside the, uh, the detachable card, but um, 
you connect it to maybe different machines. Uh, you may want to have no warning and also not saving those host keys. Um, I'm using that only uh, the host name might uh, uh, hint that with an old PCM CIA card I'm using in two machines. So I'm mostly only using them in, in my local uh, network. And um, so, yeah, at that point, I don't care. <laughs> but that's really a I don't care setting. Then um, there are two, um, two um, host uh, yeah, co configure commands, uh, proxy command and proxy jump. Proxy command is in there quite for quite a while. Um, basically, if you uh, said for this the host, please use the proxy command, whatever, um, then it expects that whatever makes a, a standard in, standard out connection to your SSH server. And it still does host key verification because that's uh, complete might be completely unencrypted. So a typical way to connect to um, a host behind a jump host or gateway is to connect to the gateway first, then call netcat, which does basically standard in, standard out over the network with TCP, uh, and connect to my home server port 22. Um, at some point, the SSH developers noticed, well, that's used quite often, and netcat is always uh, several implementations, different options, and sometimes it's flaky. I had like hundreds of SSH sessions still running because NetCat wasn't exiting probably. So they introduced um, a dash capital uh, W option which says uh, just connect TCP plane to that port, that host name. So that came with uh, OpenSSH 5.4 and uh, because uh, that is often used with uh, just port 22 because you actually want to SSH to the next machine. They even introduced uh, proxy jump as option, which does exactly the same as line uh, above, uh, but you only have to give the host name and it knows how to do the rest. And um, there's also command line option for that. It's dash capital J. And you can even specify multiple such uh, gateways, which is difficult with proxy command a bit. Uh, separated by comma. So you can say first jump to that one, then to that one, and then to the final one. Um, for example, if I have like a company firewall and then inside the team a firewall again, uh, I need to go to some server behind that. Um, oh, those features are only available since recently, 7.3, but very nice. Needed very often, unfortunately. Um, another thing is, uh, which I don't use very often, but might be interesting, um, control master and control path. Well, yeah, control master is a setting where you can um, use one single SSH connection, so one TCP stream, but internally it's multiple uh, streams. So you can have several SSH sessions over the same TCP connection. Because some uh, SSH servers are rather picky and only allow one single SSH session. And you can't then do some SCP, like copying files from the machine back and forth. And uh, with that setting, um, the first connection um, uh, is the master and uh, every other connection uses the same TCP stream and doesn't open a new connection. Um, might also be helpful if you have a if like fail to bun or something uh, which uh, fail to bun not but um, a firewall which if it sees too many connections even if successful uh, in a short time it will block you seen that um, helps too on the other hand it's a bit a little bit uh, uh, annoying in in some other uh, um, cases. Uh, so uh, since I don't have such firewalls or, uh, where, I'm, uh, on my, where, where, um, where I'm working, um, I don't need that setting, but yeah. So uh, then some um, general reminder, tunnels. Uh, uh, okay, well, yeah, I should uh, go forward quickly. Um, tunnel, tunneling is not evil, it's good, it saves your uh, privacy. 
and uh, even is for your own security. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll skip a few parts. Uh, we have especially one part which I will show you. This one, SOX proxy. Um, SSH uh, is able to open a lo locally a SOX proxy. Uh, so you can, for example, to t uh, tell your browser, um, my SOX proxy is localhost port 1080. And uh, then it makes every connection over the SOX proxy. And a SOX proxy means um, you get a connection, but first have to tell where you uh, want to go. So you say, like, I want to go to that IP and uh, that port number. Please make me a, a TCP connection. And all those connections come out on the other end of the SSH connection, as if you were surfing from there. Might be nice if you want to look some German TV uh, shows uh, and have some server at some German data center like Hetzner or so. You can sa tell your browser, well, use that SOX proxy, serve from Germany. Um, be careful, DNS requests by default don't go over it. Uh, unless you're using at least uh, SOX protocol 4A. I think nowadays SOX protocol 5 is the co most common one, but just be reminded that it wasn't uh, always like this, and old programs might have issues. Um, well, I'm skipping VPN because it's rather ugly anyway. One nice feature is um, SSH has some kind of escape key. It's uh, the escape key is actually a combination. It's enter and uh, tilde. So if you press enter and the tilde, usually not, uh, over an SSH connection, nothing happens unless you press a second tilde or any non-command key. So usually that only happens if you press enter after command on a command line and then want to com call a command from your home directory. Uh, and the only combinations which do something are um, well, tilde, tilde gives you a tilde. Might be confusing, but it's the escape from the escape. Um, tilde dot is the most useful one. Just terminate that SSH connection. Be careful if you have several behind uh, each other. You need to think of how many tildes you have to type. Like if you want to kill the third connection, you have to type like four times because, um, yeah, well. And um, you can even suspend your SSH session with a tilde control Z and uh, or send the SSH into background with tilde ampersand and you even get a help with tilde question mark. And there are a few more like list all, uh, um, all port forwardings and stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll skip that one. Um, same. That's the summary basically. Um, SSH is, is much more than, than just logging in on the command line on a remote server. You can tons of nice stuff with it. You can um, drill through firewalls. You can drill through uh, castrated Wi-Fi's, whatever. Uh, tunnels are important, not evil. And you don't ha uh, get SSH only on Linux bo boxes. And then there's uh, three slides with links uh, from things I mentioned. Um, so, um, but I'll skip that uh, now too, more or less. Um, yeah, the URL for PSP SSH is so long that I had to abbreviate it. Um, important, uh, you get all the slides on this URL uh, on the bottom. Um, so you can look up all the links there and I hope that I'm now more or less in time. Sorry for the... Um, Speed talk. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, well, if you have questions, ideas, what else I couldn't put in here, um, I'm still here for until tomorrow afternoon. So I hope, uh, yeah, well. There was in every uh, something new for nearly everyone. Um, yeah. Okay. No, no more time uh, for questions. So uh, let's stop here and uh, get to the next talk from Rex Noor about uh, his Ascension project. Uh, it's about. Um, 
putting uh, DNS zones from a bind into the GNU net uh, independent DNS uh, network. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to li listen to the talk too. 